Quinococcal granulosis. Common name Tinea echinococcus, also known as uh, dog tapworm. Uh, it is the also known as hydrated worm. Let us change the color of pen if possible. Geographical distribution worldwide as well as in temperate regions. Uh, habitat. Now habitat is usually decided based on uh, where the adult worm lives. So adult worm lives in small intestine of dog because dog is the definitive host here. Egg. Egg is almost identical to the tinea eggs that we have seen. There is an oncosphere with three pairs of hooklet. There is an uh, uh, inner embryo four and outer uh, layer. So yeah, that's it for egg. Adult worm is actually it is the smallest cystode. It is uh, having a scolex or head which has a similar kind of structure with tinea solium it has rostellum with hooklets and four suckers it has a short neck and it has a uh, very short almost this and it has one two and just three segments are there so one two and three segments are there uh, which you can say that immature segment mature segment and gravid segment the gravid segment is the biggest segment uh, the larval form is also known as hydrated cyst. It has three layers. Uh, the innermost layer is known as endocyst. It is basically the germinal layer. It is the vital layer from which the everything will come to life. Brood capsules with head, future head, scolysis, hydrated fluid as well as the outer layers. The outer layer is ectocyst, it is elastic in nature, it is for protection and it curls on because it is elastic in nature if you expose it to inner contents. And then third layer is basically inflammatory reaction of host which gives a fibrous layer uh, to the cyst that is known as pericyst. So if we see this, uh, this is the outer laminated layer uh this one right uh then you have the germinal layer this one is the germinal layer so this is outer this is inner so this is endocyst this is uh, ectocyst right uh and from this uh, inner germinal layer you can see the gamule which is the solid part which later on become the hollow from inside that is brood capsules with future uh, heads uh, that is this uh, scolysis or also known as protoscolax and uh, sometimes it does not have this and we call it as sterile cyst uh, and this one is basically the pericyst which is the inflammatory reaction of host so this hydrated cyst contain the hydrated fluid which is colorless or pale yellow in color uh, which is very acidic in nature it contains various sodium uh, salts like sodium chloride sulfate phosphate sodium and calcium salts of succinic acid it is antigenic so we can use it for sorry serological taste but it is anaphylactic and very toxic so we have to be very careful while handling with hydrated cyst. Uh, it also contains hydrated sand, which is a granular deposit at the bottom, which contain brood capsule, uh, scolysis, and hooklets. So this is the scolysis uh, from hydrated cyst. Uh, you can see the hooklets and suckers uh, invaginated within our cycle. Uh, the second diagram is showing the scolex from hydrated cysts showing hooklets and suckers uh, so these are all showing hydrated uh, cyst 
showing paracyst, ectocyst, laminated outer layer and few brood capsules which I have marked. The wall of hydrated cyst under higher magnification showing free brood capsules. More pictures of hydrated cyst from biopsies. These are the free hooklets of hydrated, uh, which is found in hydrated sand at the bottom. If the hydrated cyst does not contain brood capsule or brood capsule is there, but it is without the scolax, then we call it a sterile acephalocyst. Sometimes within a hydrated cyst, uh, the brood capsules are there and they get detached and they themselves start to produce another cyst within a cyst which we called as endogenous daughter cyst. Sometime in, instead of growing inside uh, the germinal layer it starts to give growth outside and that is known as exogenous cyst. It is usually seen when it develops in bone. So now the interesting part which will actually summarize everything is the life cycle so as i already told you this is the one exception where humans are not the definitive host definitive host is usually the dog and intermediate host is also not human optimum intermediate host is sheep so usually the cycle continues between dog and sheep humans are accidental intermediate host so this is to be remembered this is unusual from the other life cycles that we have learned mode of infection um, now when I say mode of infection I am talking about human beings so here we are not talking about definitive host which is dog I will talk about either sheep or human and for them ingestion of egg is uh, the mode of infection so infection Mm, uh, happens through ingestion and infective form is egg so anything which gets contaminated with this egg water or food can also uh, transmit the infection infective form is embryonated egg so uh, sheep will ingest uh, uh, sorry the dog will ingest the dead sheep and obviously sheep is an intermediate host so it will have uh, larval form that is hydrated cyst and this larva will become adult worm in small intestine of dog uh, these eggs are released in feces of dog and that is the infective form for intermediate host uh, that is sheep cow pig or humans and their embryo is released it penetrates intestinal wall go to portal vein liver lung systemic circulation and then it reaches to other organ where it becomes hydrated cyst usually this gets eaten up by the dog so life cycle continues but for humans this is a dead end because dogs usually do not get access to human meat so again a cdc diagram uh, to help us uh, summarize everything so I will come to the human portion later on first let us understand what happens between dog and sheep dog is the definitive host sheep is the intermediate host now uh, definitive host will eat up the sheep's meat which contains the hydrated cyst or larval form because it is intermediate host the larva will become the adult worm in small intestine which will release the eggs these eggs are eaten up by the sheep and there the uh, embryo will be released and develop into hydrated cyst. That's it. But instead of a sheep, if these eggs are from which are released from dog due to close proximity of dog and humans, if it is eaten by human beings, then same embryo which is released will develop this hydrated cyst in various organs. Commonly lung and liver are the common sites which are usually affected. So I can say that uh, dog is the definitive host where the adult worm in small intestine live which releases the eggs. Eggs are eaten up by sheep, pig or humans and there the hydrated cyst is seen. Simple. 
So how does this cyst develop? Initially there is a brood capsule, then uh, a spherical solid organ will be there, then it gets vacuolated, then protoscolax with invaginated protoscolax is attached to pedicles and free fluid is developed and grow slowly it will grow 4 cm per year. The host contribution is basically the paresis which is the inflammatory reaction around the cyst, nothing much there. Pathogenicity in humans you can see hydrated cyst as I already told you liver and lung are the commonly affected site followed by brain, spleen, kidney, basically any organ with rich blood supply. Lab diagnosis, uh, you can do antibody and antigen detection, uh, we can also use molecular methods like PCR and DNA probes. Uh, X-ray, uh, sonography, CT scan, MRI and other radiological procedure help us to locate uh, where the cyst is. Uh, earlier there was a uh, skin taste which was done which is known as Cassonese taste. It detects the type 1 hypersensitivity to the hydrated fluid antigen but it is very risky taste there is a risk of anaphylaxis uh, so it is not used now. Uh, cyst puncture just for the diagnosis purpose is contraindicated because there is a risk that hydrated content will be spilled out and there will be anaphylaxis. So what is the treatment? Treatment is PAR that is uh, puncture, aspiration of fluid, infusion of uh, scolicidal agent which will kill the heads of the worms and then again re-aspiration of fluid after the 5 minutes. Uh, the complications of this colicidal agents uh, depending on whatever you have used for example if you use cetrimide it can cause acidosis, alcohol can cause inflammation of a biliary system. Uh, if you use saline, you hypertonic saline then there is a risk of hypernatremia. Sodium hypochlorite also has a risk of hypernatremia. In later stage pad does not work, uh, then you have to go for full surgical excision and uh, post-operatively you can give praziquantel albendazole. Uh, thank you.